Are you playing music? Yeah, <laughs> we're playing music, and I imagine the Asian network probably again they're quite specifically Asian yeah. music orientated. So uh, largely Radio Two or, or this station. <laughs> and actually, it's probably a bit too lightweight for this station. Probably not a big enough band name yeah. for Radio Two. So none of them. I'll be surprised if you hear it anywhere <laughs> ever again. <laughs> exactly. Um, Dan, you uh, you're not the sort of person who's uh, who's charmed by uh, that sort of music. They say that they're influenced by the Kinks, Richard and Linda, Linda Thompson, the Jam, Simon and Garfunkel. I don't know if those influences have found their way into that tune and uh, appeal to you. Mm, well, maybe. Uh, I was. Going to say that I thought it was well good. Um, I liked it, but there's definitely there's a little funky edge to it. I thought that maybe Harry failed to pick up on. So uh, minus point for you. So there's this uh, there's this there's this little dance I do, uh, a sort of <laughs> finger click dance, which uh, is it kind of looks like I'm not really interested in dancing, but actually I'm very carefully, uh, you know, it's a studded um, non nonchalance about it, <laughs> and I could do that to that tune. Yeah. I've the stopped dancing. Thing. I've actually stopped dancing, what? which is a great shame because I used to be a big dancer. Just as you know. now. <laughs> no, no, no. But you, Harry, you've seen me at discos in the past. I've seen you right. giving it all sorts. Yeah, and I used to be quite the quite the mover. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Enthusiastic, if not technically proficient. A lot of people might not think it's possible, given your uh, you know odd dimensions. But you were quite a fluent mover. <laughs> well, I'm rather like Peter Crouch, I defy those expectations. <laughs> I'm very much the Crouch of the uh, dance floor. floor. But I have to say that I was dancing away, and I caught myself reflected in a mirror, and I thought, what a stupid given. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, man, and then I, there was a thing in the paper once that said uh, Steve Merchant seen at a uh, seen at a pub dancing looked like a crane, like a gangly oh, bird oh, crane, oh, oh. and I thought that, and it just cut deep. Particularly as I know specifically I wasn't dancing on that particular. Occasion. I think you should plough through. I think you should ignore them. No. I think you're unfortunate yeah. because as a, as a tiny, tiny man. Um, I don't stand out in a crowd. I've just got to watch out for other people's f feet because they could sure stand <laughs> right crushing. upon me. But um, but no, 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 no. You've got to dance, man. Yeah. You've got to dance. <laughs> That's the kind of appeal that uh, I would perhaps make, uh, hear from a James Brown, <laughs> or indeed a Prince. I wouldn't expect to hear it from a uh, sports reporter such as yourself. Um, okay, so we've, we've quite enjoyed that. We've decided we might be able to do a slight finger-clicking dance, although I myself have given up dancing, even of the finger-clicking kind. This next tune is slightly more uh, left-field. The band are uh, Menomina, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they describe themselves, I think, as being sort of slightly uh, uh, adventurous, experimental uh, rock. I think they're slightly in the uh, Flaming Lips mould, but see what you make of them. Here's Menomina and a track called Wet and Rusting. So they have an album out called Friend or Foe, which comes uh, out on the 17th of September, and that's a single called Wet and Rusting, which is also out tomorrow. And I've uh, pronounced the band name incorrectly. Apparently, you should actually pronounce it Minamana, as in the uh, Muppet oh, song. Minamana. <laughs> so they're called uh, Minamana, and uh, they're an Oregon-based three-piece. And um, there they are. They basically make their music from uh, improvised loops, which they sort of improvise on top of. And I don't know. I was quite charmed by it. I thought it, it, it uh, was a little, something a little bit fresh. Uh, Dan, are you, do you share my view? Definitely, yeah. I liked it a lot. I was glad it burst into life about halfway through. Because it was kind of pleasant, quirky, and could easily have drifted it off. But, um, uh, yeah, I was a big fan. I could see what you meant with the flaming lips, lips thing. It's got a big sound. The drums were hip P3 player of choice. Indeed, and you Later. could use any uh, downloading uh, oh, as, long as, it's, as long as it's legal. Oh, of course, yes. Don't, uh, don't, you know, no, but there's a lot of choices out there. There are. So it's important that we make that point. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. Uh, um, apparently, they're the blog buzz band in the US, having already shifted uh, 40,000 copies by word of mouth alone. Harry, will you be uh, buying one? Here's a problem with that song, Steve. Uh, I'm sat at home. I'm doing me Sudoku. <laughs> uh, the track comes. The track comes on. I'm like, oh, this is this is all right. It's not that interesting. Perhaps it's making me do my Sudoku a bit better. I've got all the fours, perhaps. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then he gets the good bit, and my mind's taken away from my Sudoku. And then after about a minute, it went a bit dreary again. I think, all right, back to the Sudoku then. And then it goes rubbish again, and good again, and I don't know whether I'm listening to the music, am I doing my Sudoku? I'm not giving my full attention what an to unusual either project. <laughs> what an unusual <laughs> way to critique a record. Uh, what, what would be the ideal Sudoku <laughs> music, in your opinion? Well, something that just drifts across and you don't notice it's there. That, there were so many time changes and what have you, it kept grabbing my attention, and right. then I got bored with it and stopped listening. So maybe sort of a Vangelis soundtrack album oh, or some Philip Glass. That would be perfect. I got loads of noodle, mate. I've got so much nonsense jazzy noodle that you could... You must on. be amazing at Sudoku. I'll tell you what, I rattle through, even the killers, I can really? do them in, not the, uh, not the Mormon band, but the, the killer Sudokus. <laughs> I can do it in 10, 15 minutes, no guys, problem. Guys, no problem. guys, this is Hiya. fascinating, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we have to move on. Um, sadly, we were hoping to get to Sammy on the line. She's uh, currently somewhere around Stevenage and get her opinion, but uh, we've lost her as is off in the way. And um, so we'll have to uh, plough on, and sadly, uh, we're almost at the end of our, uh, our delve into the pigeonholes. But uh, after this trail, the new single from The Boss.
As you know, I have said it in the past, and I'm always happy to say it again, if my fortunes fade and I'm forced to go on to a, some kind of Channel 5 uh, reality show where I have to kiss and do things with a bloke, you know my choice would always be the boss. I've always said that. I've got a little bit of man love for uh, for BS. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that's, that's <laughs> horrific. <laughs> that's suddenly horrible. But uh, no, but obviously I, I adore the boss, and uh, partly because he, again, like Prince, is one of the only true, uh, I think, rock and roll showman left. And um, so I'm always you know, anxious about new releases from him, uh, lest they turn away that, that that group of people that already have mixed feelings towards him. And you are one of them, uh, Harry. You've always had, uh, you're know, umming, umming and eyeing about uh, where the boss stands in your in your opinion. Yeah, I always struggled with the bluster, Steve, the endless bluster. Um, but I really enjoyed that. It sounded like a gazillion other songs. Um, but he did it really well. It's really nice, and I liked it. I liked the last album, which I know is a departure from what he usually does. Yeah. But, and that's back with the E Street Band, I believe they're called. Uh, that was very good. I really enjoyed it. You uh, you came along to see the uh, Seeger Sessions uh, live yeah. concert, and I think you enjoyed that, didn't you? That was fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. They, and we were quite lucky. We saw it in quite a, uh, a restricted viewing, wasn't it? There wasn't mm. many people there, almost more well, musicians. We weren't sat by in a pillar. <laughs> we, there was, there was only, yeah, it's a small yeah. audience. Yeah, it, and that was, yeah, spectacular. Spectacular. Well, he's doing, I think, one gig later in the year, I think maybe approaching December, and obviously uh, I shall be uh, on the hotline to my agent to try and get <laughs> me some uh, complimentary tickets but uh, I'm looking forward to it enormously as I say particularly when he's with the E Street Band because he really knows how to partner a show and one of the great things about the boss is he, he's not lost sight in all those years of success of giving his audience a good time which mm. uh, again is something I've always been frustrated about with a lot of uh, bands that I've enjoyed when I've gone on to see a gig and it's oh god i got to trudge through the hits and dare I say it I don't want to mention names but Mr Bob Dylan <laughs> oh, oh, some of his live shows, man alive. Um, Dan, you've, uh, again, I don't think you've even uh, come as far as Harry on the uh, on the Bruce no, train. No. What are your views? I don't doubt that he's a top man and a top performer, and I think you showed me a clip once of a, a video of a concert where he's crawling around on the floor and he ends up crawling into, like, a, a ditch on the stage and he's yeah. telling a story about a working man who's yeah. worked himself to the bone and all that. Oh, and I think that's weird. great, but... Uh, <laughs> but doesn't do anything for me, I'm afraid, but Bruce. That was slightly rockier than I expected, and it was lively enough, but it didn't connect with me at all, I'm afraid. I just wasn't feeling anything. I'm not bothered if I don't hear that again. Well, I think um, this uh, this opinion probably uh, is exactly how the uh, Six Music listenership are divided, right down the middle, I suspect. Some who adore the boss, and others who can't get past, as you say, the bluster. Although I'm not entirely sure I know what you mean when you say the bluster. No, nah, nor me. I'm sorry, it's a good <laughs> word. Just a word you pulled out of the bag. Um, okay, well, we, th we think that Sammy may be uh, fast approaching. Ooh. Hopefully she can uh, dig out an otherwise mediocre show from the uh, pit into which his far is quick descent, quickly descending. I'm in King's Cross now. She e she texts us. Oh, this really does feel like Challenge Annika. I don't have a drop of Squash to my name. I'll see. You know how much she likes the squash. Mm. What number did she uh, text in on, Steve? <laughs> That's six four zero four six. Can anyone touch. text in? Anyone that? can get in touch that way if oh, they've got wow. something to uh, contribute to the show. And they can also email, of course, Stephen dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Here's some Gil Scott Heron. 1971's Pieces of a Man, that's Gil Scott Heron, and Home is Where the Hatred Is. It's the Steve Show, BBC Six Music, with me, Stephen Merchant, and my crone is Harry, who's a banker, and uh, Dan, who's not, and, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> pardon me, sorry, <coughs> should have done that off air, it was very sloppy <laughs> of me, sorry, I just feel like I'm so relaxed at home in this studio, you know, with my yeah. old pals, that I can just get away with murder, that's why I'm sat here in my underwear. Scratching yeah. um, yourself. Yeah, yeah, drinking a bottle of scotch. <laughs> um, <laughs> Standard. Uh, uh, Sammy apparently is uh, on away, so don't worry, she'll, uh, she'll add that much needed, uh, um, feminine touch to the Lucky. show. Plus, of course, um, adding another female dimension, Amy Mann, the session and interview with her coming up uh, in a wow. couple of tracks' time. But uh, prior to that, Dan, we need a little choice from you. Really? From mm. me? Excellent. Well, I, I've got a, a great one today. I, I guarantee, I Dan guarantee, that you'll love this within about 20 seconds mm -hmm. of it uh, commencing with these big marching drums and it turns into a, a big soul-stomping monster. Um, it's one of those tracks, it's, uh, it's a little bit sexist, I might get in trouble here, but it's a sexist in a good way. Sure, ah, the best kind of sexism. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> yeah. of, you know, men are different to women, but that's quite good, and women are great anyway, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So, I, the I hope that the we hair. can, yeah, all that sort of chat. Um, lyrically, kind of in a, a sort of a James Brown, it's a man's world type area, so I think we're okay there. Uh -huh. um, but, first and foremost, it's just a great, great tune. It's by Ernie K. Doe, and it's called Here Come the Girls. 
That was Dan's choice for this week's Steve show, and that's uh, Ernie K. Doe, and here come the girls. Mm. Is that one of those songs which was recorded recently, made to sound old? No, 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 it's, the it's, it's the real deal, um, and uh, it's not that difficult to find, actually. There's a compilation of uh, New Orleans funk that you'll find on Soul Jazz Records. Quite easy to find. Or alternatively, uh, you could hunt out the original 7-inch, which will cost you a fortune, and is really, really difficult, and will probably involve you going to dusty record stores somewhere in the uh, Midwest, so... Why not try that? Yeah, one of those options. Um, <laughs> and uh, 6446, uh, let us know how you get on. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so I'll come posted. Up- gig at the uh, O2 Indigo and uh, she very kindly agreed to come into the studio and have a chat and play a tune and uh, so here's how we got on. It's BBC Six Music with me Stephen Merchant and uh, I'm so excited because uh, this person might be one of my uh, top ten singer-songwriters. Sometimes I like to uh, you know put them in order and uh, you know sometimes you've made it as high as number three. I think and it's good to rank people. Well, I like to think so. I do this with my friends, you know, my family <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that you're certainly in the top five at the moment of uh, my favourite singer-songwriters. It's Amy Mann and uh, I'd ask for a little round of applause but there's no one here so <laughs> we'll just welcome you and thank you so much for fitting this in it would yeah I'll, I'll give you a no it's pathetic um so thank you so much for doing this because uh, you know you need a tight, important rock and roll schedule um you've just come in you've just jetted in on a plane i did so what did you do immediately raid the bar throw something out the window how does it work uh look for a starbucks sure that's so sad <laughs> it's so, <laughs> so American. sad and yet so true yeah and uh, the last time I, I i spoke to you because we've we've met once before in the past i don't know if you recall it was after one of your kids there was a slightly awkward introduction like we'd been set up on a blind date yeah and we sort of shook hands i mean i had somebody go get you or something right yeah you yeah, sent yeah, someone totally, to just fetch me like <laughs> right absolutely somebody told me you're out there i'm like go get him Find him. I uh, I was once backstage uh, after a, after a, um, um, a stage concert, and I can't tell you the name of this major this major star. But he did just summon his people to go off and collect attractive women and bring them back. I've heard of that. It's unbelievable. Many times, and yeah. I was there, just fingers crossed, thinking yeah. surely there's going to be an overspill. <laughs> there was nothing. But yeah, we we were fetched, and we talked about boxing. You were boxing. Yeah. Time. Is this something you're still doing? I'm still doing it. Yeah. Is yeah. this just so you can handle yourself in a lot of LA street brawls, or? I don't think that's going to come up that many times. I have to say, I, I do it just because it's fun. Are you a boxing fan at all? I'm not particularly. It scares me. I'm a man who wears glasses. The idea of any fist. And in yet, my your face. friend Ricky Gervais is, and I and I actually uh, challenged him to to do some sparring. I haven't seen him. You've heard hard there, the there from uh, him, yeah. and he's always in LA. He's in there every yeah, other week. Yeah, that, that my phone did not ring he's for terrified. that challenge. Yeah. You don't look naturally like a boxer. I, I don't think I naturally am a boxer. I mean, I've done it enough now to know that. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. That uh, I'm slow. I can't take a punch very well. Uh, I don't hit hard. And my reflexes are really, uh, really lacking. So I, I kind of, I, I, I have it all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you're going to play something for us. I, I want to talk some more, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to, to get something kind of in the yeah. Can, I wanted to play a, a brand new song because I'm just finishing up a record that will probably be out maybe in January. Okay. But um, I'm going to play this live. Are you coming to see me? or? No, or? Listen, I would, but listen, yeah, I'm go- mm-hmm. I have to go to a wedding tomorrow. But one of the top, one of the other top five. <laughs> it's their wedding. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's Neil Young's wedding. <laughs> So uh, I, I was I, for a split second. I thought you were going to say it was Neil Diamond. Oh well, yeah. well that would be fantastic. And that would be yeah. really depressing. Um, it's James Blunt's uh, bar mitzvah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> that pained me. I no, actually... it's weird. You see, it's interesting you mention this because I don't want to slag anyone off, but I've never understood <laughs> but... why you're not a global superstar and people like, you know, and fill in the blanks here. But um, thank you. I don't. I don't understand what happened. What did you do wrong? Did you piss off the wrong people? I think at various um, at various times I've been seen to be too. G, which is hilarious to me because I think I, you know, I mean, I'm a pop songwriter. Yeah. And then maybe nowadays not quite edgy enough. And also, like now, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm sort of out of the major label thing, so sure. it, it's kind of a moot point because nobody gets huge putting out their own records. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. It's I don't so frustrating because I remember that you were nominated, of course, for your amazing music for the film Magnolia, which I think is a film that everyone should adore. It's a great. And yet movie. you lost out on the Oscar to Phil Collins. Phil Collins and his cartoon monkey love song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, man alive. <laughs> I know. Well, if you're going to lose to somebody, it should be... It should be a cartoon monkey. <laughs> what was it? Was it Tarzan or something? It was Tarzan. Tarzan. I couldn't even have lost to Randy Newman and his 